the Rothschilds, who are only a bit player in this, by the way, they're only they're way down the list. They're not the top by any mix, any way, shape, or form. The Rothschilds bailed out Donald Trump in the early 90s, so they've had to move move away from the dollar. Bill, the backing, because there's nothing behind it. There's nothing. This is all fantasy, anyway. It never used to be, but now it's fantasy. We all know that there's no gold anywhere um, backing any of this. So they want to move over to digital currency. And as you were saying, now they're coming out saying Trump's going to be moving us over to this. Who do you think is going, who's controlling it? Who do you think's put this system? Who do you think pays the people who are setting these things up? Rich, how are you, brother? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for asking me on. I appreciate it. Well, the thanks is all mine, Rich. Um, for our friends at home, I'm absolutely delighted Rich has joined us today. Um, you can't meet a nicer guy. You can't <laughs> meet someone who's more dedicated to the truth than, than Rich. Well, I, I think we're even Stevens there. We just want to know what's going on in the world we've done our best to figure it as as much as you can i think rich's knowledge is probably far superior um to my own because i spin so many other <laughs> other plates um i'm really been looking forward to this podcast simply because i can relax because rich is so cool and i can just <laughs> Like say right over over to you, yeah. mate. Right, make make sense of this for me. And um, it's also about uh, a subject that I'm quite passionate people understand, and that is simply read 1984. <laughs> you know, yeah. I I say it in just about every single podcast video that I do because it is so pertinent. It relates so much to what we're all going through. And um, Rich and I will come in and do a little introduction into what, what is this book about and how did it come about and who who by. Um, but yes, Rich, so just to reiterate, the, the, the thanks is all mine. Um, your, um, your own podcast is en enlightening. Remind us of the name, it's... It's a glitch in the code. It's Richard. on iconic.com and obviously on my, my YouTube until I get chopped off. Um, and bit shoot channels. So you can see the, hear the audio version there, but it's glitch in the code. Yes, of course it is. Um, and also we should say that Rich does a lot of work with David. We all know the David uh, to whom I'm referring, an, an icon in the, um, in the truth world. Um, and yes, welcome, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're going to talk about 1984 now. Um, it's one of those books. Look, when it came out, I think a lot of people don't realise that Brave New World and um, 1984 have a complete, a, a real connection there. And if you look at the world right now and, and read Brave New World, Aldous Huxley and 1984 and combine the two, you really get what's going on right now in, in the world. And Aldous Huxley taught George Orwell. I think it was geography, but I might have got that wrong. Geography or something like that like along the line. So they, they knew each other. So they were well in with with all of these things and understood. Um, so they're very revealing. And even down to some of the terminology. I mean, I couldn't believe that I actually heard frontline workers in the film actually as a term that they used for um, for the uh, the military, the people to be like, to want to be like. It was like you can... Do, all of these frontline workers are basically sacrificing themselves for you. And I was like, this is just ridiculous. It's so silly that, that if you try to explain to someone, they'll go, don't be silly. That's not actually happening. But obviously we know frontline workers are being put up on a pedestal with scientists and with doctors now. So unless you're a scientist and you're a doctor and you've got a PhD, you can't have an opinion about the current situation, um, which is utterly insane because Dr. Harold Shipman was a doctor and I wouldn't really want to go him for him for my jab because yeah, you Google Doctor Hold shit, but you'll get you'll understand what I mean. So 
Can it, I chip the in? The correlations are there, mate. They're just bizarre. Yeah, I just want on the education thing. When you see um, people going, yeah, we like you've got a, a, a degree in immunology or, or, or whatever. What, what's the what's what's the um, the viral qualification? Um, uh, I think it's just virology, a, 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 isn't it? Epidemiologist or something, isn't it? Sounds right. Right. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like. Oh, if you only knew how the university system worked, how selective it is in its in its pushing of this theory, but conveniently completely ignoring this one, and how these young, keen, young guns get into the uni because they want to be a GP or a doctor, and they follow this curriculum to a T, not knowing that there's all this other information out there and not learning the skills to... to access and make sense of this alternative knowledge and all they end up doing and and i spent five years in university so i, I feel you know and, and i'm a social scientist i studied a social science which is um youth work and then i did social work hmm. um so that's made up of biology sociology psycho psychology um and social theory um and I remember getting to the end of my uni course, and I'm, oh my God, we're just so, we're just like, we're literally being, ed we, we, we're being instructed in how to deal with the minutiae in life without considering the yep. much bigger picture here. And when it's something like dealing with young people's lives as a youth worker, um, if you they use the word empowerment all all the time it's like the biggest used word in the social world is empowerment right it's like yeah the government wants me to pay 20,000 pounds to do this course which i then have to pay back for the rest of my life a debt slave i then get a qualification that empowers me to empower young people to go into a factory for the next 40 years or go into a call centre for the next 40 years or sit behind a desk for the next 40 years, at which point they retire, their body's fucked, they've, they've, they've gorged on Western diet their whole life, so they, you know, there's no glorious retire. I'm just expanding here, Rich, on, on you just can go down such a rabbit hole with all this, right? But... But when people go, yeah, well, you're not a doctor. It's like, no, I actually know more than the doctors. And I'm, I'm very proud about that. It's because I've never stopped reading. I've never stopped educating myself. I've never stopped traveling. I've never stopped having an open mind. And yes, I might not be able to tell you the, the parts of a cell as, as well as that, you know, this, this, this person can. But on a structural perspective, I, I, I think people like us, because we're outside of it, we, we can see it for what it is, right? Absolutely. And what you kind of explained there is the, the Ministry of Truth from 1984. And what you were saying, like the selectiveness of it as well. You've got the Great Barrington Declaration, which was thousands of doctors, scientists, and all these guys you say you put up on a pedestal are saying that the current situation is nonsense in a lot of ways or definitely detrimental, doesn't really stand up to... to the problem is the reaction to the problem is causing far more trouble than the problem itself. And then, but they're shunned. Go, oh, no, not those doctors. Those doctors are quacks. Those doctors are insane. They're, they're mental. Look at these doctors. And it's like, well, you can't do that. You can't come out and say to me, oh, well, if you're not a doctor and you're not a physician and you're not a GP and you haven't got a PhD in this, you don't know what you're doing. We'll go, well, these two guys do. Go, oh, no, not those guys. These guys. Go, well, what are you talking about? It's this level of insanity that we're getting to of this selective feeling are beyond, are beyond facts and and it is now facts of um, feelings have replaced facts and that's where we do so in the ministry of, ministry of truth in 1984 they they just they literally burn information they rub things out from history they rewrite history hmm. and that's what's happening now as we see with the internet censorship they're rewriting everything we do and, and and george orwell was trying to tell you this this is how they'll do it they'll scrub you out of history and I, I think like people like our generation, I mean, um, I'm, I'll be 40. I'm 40, pretty much 40 in a couple of weeks. Um, so I think we're the last guys to remember what it was like before the Ministry of Truth really kicked in. And I really do think our generation 
Um, I know there's a little bit of time between us, but not a lot. 11 years, I think you said, or 10 years. Are the glass guys to remember what the world was like before the internet, before the ministry of truth really kicked in? And that's what the internet is. It's the ministry of truth, in essence. And everybody's mm -hmm. bunging their information in there. And we're going, and that's that, that, that has a lot of different processes. But they're going to scrub it out because you're putting it all in one library of Alexandra. And we're going, and we're doing this now, what we're doing now. We need to find a way of getting it out, getting out of the Ministry of Truth and putting it elsewhere because kids who are born now, when they get to 20, we're going to be 60, you're going to be about 70 yourself, they're not going to know what the world was like without the internet, without the Ministry of Truth in. So what you said there, that Ministry of Truth will become the educational system. That will be the indoctrination. That will be the cult programming. Literally will be will set in. We're seeing the edge in a way of of history as we saw with a lot of these protests in earlier in the year with the burning of the statues pulling down the statues the statues doesn't then where well, they were not there to promote these things as good things they were there as a warning as what happened mm -hmm. don't do this again this is what happened here's the history of it let's learn from that if you get rid of history like they do in the ministry of truth you'll repeat the same mistakes again that's what happens with people with um who get um, brainwashed. They forget about what they did in the past. They'll do it again. And they'll get reset. And if you look into MK Ultra and all these things, just resetting them, resetting them, resetting them on a loop. And that's where we're going to get to. So 1984 had loads of different levels, and it depends on which the way you look at it. But part of that was the, the, um, the deletion of alternative information. And that's where we're at now really critically. Since, since the whole apparently... Um, uh, what do they call it? The storming of the um, building in America. There was no storming. It was barely a gust of wind. There clearly, it was not storming. They let the doors open and let people in through the side door. There was no storming of that, regardless what you think of, of Trump at all. There's no storming of that. But they've used that to be able to kind of go now, you're, you guys who talk about these alternative methods of understanding, now you're domestic terrorists, which is utterly insane. Mm. Utterly insane. So th this is where we're at, and this is the deletion of history and deletion of information. I'm just going to make a point here, Rich, and uh, almost every single person in society, um, and you get this a lot with with fellow podcasters when they go, "Well, take so and so," like, "Do you want that to happen again?" and and when you understand, no, the, the history we've been told, mm. it is a version of it. It is a version. And there used to be wonderful documentaries on the net that gave you such a completely different perspective that it was frightening the truth, right? Right. The Second World War narrative is a great example. 99.999% of people are labouring under such huge untruths, mm -hmm. right? And then using that as the foundation with which to go out and understand life and make the rules of life and make the... Yeah, well, you know, if you want... Well, you don't want this to happen. We got it. And it's like, dude, you don't know how that happened because you've never been subjected to the the real truth. And now those wonderful documentaries, which, and I'm not saying that they're 100% true. That's not the point. The point is they gave an alternative viewpoint for you to then consider in your arsenal, right? They've all been removed, Rich, from the internet. Mm. And there were some wonderful ones. Um, there, were, there were just some, some just incredible ones that got you thinking. And when you actually thought about some of the stuff you're, we, we've been taught, you realise the absolute impossibility stroke absurdity of that, that this is how history happened, Right. So going back to what you're saying about the, the you know, the, the, the facts changing, it's, it's on so many levels. The foundation of everything we base our modern society on is, is, a, is a lie. And most people are never going to know that because they, they, there's nowhere to find that info out, right? You can't, even the people that know it, 
can't put it out on the channels available because they will just be immediately deplatformed or sent or, or censored right so it's not like you know and it's it's so incredibly frightening rich there's this the most important stuff that we all need to know in life you it's not just you can't find it you're never going to know it unless you're like me freaking tenacious mm. about wanting to know the truth and you're prepared to go down this avenue and you know and and, and you've done it and I, I started doing it before this massive fact checking truth censoring movement that we're seeing now really i mean this is it's this is all this has really kicked up alongside the situation that we're all seeing in the world. Everyone knows the situation I'm talking about. Um, but you could go, if you went on, say, a video channel 10 years ago, like I was looking for the truth, because obviously my generation experienced what happened in New York and Washington that, that, that time, right? So it was very important to have other avenues where you could, find out like a, a, a more probable narrative the truth basically right and you had incredible incre videos and some of the other ones you came across because you're researching this and oh that looks a bit i you know that's not an area I, and you looked at it oh my god this is just it's it's enlightening I, I'd never considered that. Now, this person saying it, yeah, I, I completely, you know, completely get it, right? Well, they've all been removed, Rich. All this mm. information's been removed. And I'm forbidden from talking about it, right? Because I, you know... Um... Yeah, it's called, um, it's called bit burning. They've called it bit, bit burning. And I talk about this in the, in the, the book I'm, I'm writing at the moment. And it... A bit burning is it basically is the same as book burning. They're, they're deleting it, and what they've cleverly done is they've um, whether this was done on purpose, but I'm assuming it is. They've few, they're a few hundred years ahead of us in planning. They've put, got everybody to put their information, including myself, on in one library. See, as the internet is one big library, and then gone right now. You've got everything in our library. We're going to lock the doors and burn the burn the fucking thing down, and that's what they've basically done. And not only that, and the Q movement was part of this, in my opinion. They've managed to. decent because what we've we've gone and done is we've gone and put all of our information out there and gone and told them everything we know whereas we used to just chat about this in the pub or we would write it down in a diary or we would speak about it and and that happens in 1984 as well as that young girl in there the pretty girl that that um winston um falls for now you don't find out to the end i believe that she's kind of some sort of operative and she knew that he was thinking she he was having wrong think he was thinking of other things he shouldn't have been thinking of so they used her from what I can tell, they used her to smoke him out and bring him out into the open. Julia. And that's what Q, Julia, sorry. And that's what Q was, in my opinion. It was a, a, a movement, whether Trump was part of this or not, I, I can't, I don't know. But he's sure he's not a stupid man. He's a clever man. Um, they were used to smoke out all of these probably very right wing conspiracy theorists. And now they're all getting arrested because they all went in there and some, some other. Other groups tried to kind of they gaslit them into going into the building. They were allowed in the building, but what that really did was give the um, this tyrannical regime, these bloodline cult elite that really are starting to run the place now, an excuse to get rid of them all. I got banned off of Twitter, and I'm not even a Trump supporter just for sharing that video, which is fine. Um, it's not a problem because he's, this is what happens. But the point is to add on to that is not only are the people that are blatantly following Trump and supporting him got banned and are now being um, targeted those who to speak about the truth and the real truth down the middle the ones that don't go with either party and know that the left right paradigm is nonsense they're also getting targeted now as domestic terrorists like us because we've been dragged in with those lot but actually we we had no support of trump we, we were thinking well he's just as bad as the others he's a jesuit like the others he's black nobility like the others like biden is biden's got two jesuit um honorary degrees and trump's family are well known to be jesuits it, it, it doesn't matter not that the jesuits are the top they're just one element of this big hierarchy but because we were thinking slightly the same in some ways because of some of the stuff that q was supposed to stand for are very true probably not to the extremes that they're talking about but some of this elite pedophile rings and all of this stuff 
yeah, they are true. They are true to a certain level. Um, that's, this does go on in the world. But they smoked everyone out. And it was very, very clever. And there was a thing called Operation Trust um, decades ago. It was a, a Soviet Union version of this. And it's exactly the same as where Trust the Plan comes from. It was a psyop to smoke conspiracy theories and people that were talking about these things out into the open and off the in that as a as a um way of targeting this and get rid of everybody off off of social media and that's what they've done and it's very clever and then people need to realize that how many decades ahead these people are in their planning um they are really are decades ahead and this in the internet has become the ministry of truth and i'm trying to tie it back into 1984 there so yes. this studio well, was used as the same way i believe q was the q anon movement was the same process of julia it was a smoking out of people that were thinking this way out into the open so they could see them and now you've got five thousand data points on every single person that goes down into a list of undesirables the same way of someone grassing on you um would do like we had the police in the uk didn't we there, there was a thing saying if you see someone out breaking the rules um report them well then that list makes you make a list of all the people that are willing to report on their their um neighbors and then later on when you need these marshals who'd you ring who'd you contact who'd you put a flyer through the door everybody on that list because you know they'll go for it this is very very clever psychology mm. and people need to understand that this is 1984 it's, it's not going to be as blatant in your face as it is in the film but the principles are here very much here yes to get some sort of um, uh, base base plate, some starting point, um, and this is why I, 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 this is actually why I find podcasting hard. Rich is very few people have the experiences in their life to be thinking on this level that you need to be thinking on to even begin to start to try to make sense of what's going on in the world, right? So when you hear, you know, I've got people like on my, my podcast team and they go, yeah, we'll buy it. I'm like, shut up. Stop buying into that divisive blue and red shit, mm. right? Yes, I, I I saw Trump. I saw some great things in him. If I was honest, I I, I actually quite liked the guy. Absolutely. I saw I saw yeah. the the hatchet job they did on him, and I could see them doing it right. Um, but putting that to one side, I I'm equally aware there's a much bigger game in play. You know, there's much higher powers in play than a than a ginger headed man who you know isn't afraid to speak his mind, right and my and and it actually isn't just the the big brother whoever this is going to be behind our own scenario equally as important or in fact more important to understand i believe is the money supply mm -hmm. right yep the money system and this is something that I, I, this is my feeling. If if you're an observer, you're a social commentator, you're an influencer for change, you know, a, tr a truth person, what, like, if you don't understand this, you're no good to anyone, right? Uh, I don't mean that arrogantly. This is what I've come to learn. Because what used to be a simple system of exchange, you know, Rich, you paint my, my, my wall, I'll come and fix your window, but if I can't do it, look, I'm going to give you three shells. That 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 is what the commonly acknowledged barter system is for you doing my wall and give you that right. There was no profit in it. There was no interest. There was no like I'll give you three shells, but I want you to give me back like six over over three mm -hmm. years. You know, all, all right. And then of course these Babel ancient Babylonians came. You know, this this group formed and went, whoa, hang on. We can kind of subvert this very simple system of exchange, which which makes the whole world go round. But we can start, um, you know, creating ledgers and loaning loaning these shells out, right? And at the same time, we're going to put an inf uh, uh, an emphasis on the more of these shells you've got, 
the fucking better person you are, like you are more powerful, right? So it went from a system of exchange to a system of power. Mm-hmm. And by operating out the churches, the castles, you know, the, the, the prominent um, stronghold or traditional strongholds of, of leadership, right? They then were able to influence the leaders. So let's just say, and I'm just talking very rough terms here, but let's say 8,000 years ago, a king is supposed to look after his people, which I think we'd all agree is probably the idea of a king, you know. Suddenly this king's getting told by these elite uh, group of sociopaths that no, your kingly wiseliness, your honour, lies in how many shells you've got in your back shed, you know, in, 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 down in a dungeon or, you know, in the warehouse. Uh, it's not about, like, how helping the people. It's, you know, it's get, get the gold jewellery, da 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 and, and, yes, and I think that at whatever point where it became, you know, a piece of paper backed by a metal, so gold or silver... That then just compounded this whole greed power issue by taking a simple system of exchange into something that it never like was. And as a result, and as a result of whilst doing this, Rich, they very cleverly appeal to people's left brain and keep them hammered down, pinned down into that left brain thinking with the fear the you know the the lack of education the the the, the you know or the, the the shit diet giving you f- alcohol virtually for fucking free or in 1984 it was for free right they 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 kill your spiritual connection and then they've got you and they've got you in this cre- totally false world where we all then worship this money system from the moment we, 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 we come out the womb and, and or, or certainly we, we start in higher education and we, we follow it and we want to get the mortgage and we want to, you know, we can borrow this money and I can get a flashy car and that, that will make me a good person because my car's flashier than my neighbour's car. That, I'm better. The girls will want to kiss me more than that fucker there, right? <laughs> and, and this whole system then exploits the bestial nature of man right so you've got your higher self as we all know that's your your buddhist you know in tune with the universe empathy kindness understanding keep your bloody sex drive down because it's only going to get you in trouble you know you need just enough money to survive as long as you've got a roof you know this kind of higher self thinking no it keeps you in the beast I want a faster car. I want a more expensive one. I want to sleep with a hundred women a year, right? You know, I, and and what it does the 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 perversion that creeps in to that way of being then makes you vulnerable to exploitation by things like blackmail, mm-hmm. you know. By by well, we bailed you out with so and so. Now you're you're our boy, and you're gonna do what we say, and we want you. Yeah, but I don't want. Okay, then we're gonna show those photographs of you that yeah. that we you know that our uh, intelligence service recorded of you. You know when you were in that compromising position with an underage person. Oh, okay, and right, and the fear, the shame, the humiliation. You know, that you get, okay, right, I'll do it. Yes, you want, you want us to invade Iraq? Yeah, well, yeah, let's just, you know, I'll I'll lie to the British people. Don't you worry. Was it 45 minutes? Yeah, we're all going to be bombed in 45. They'll believe it. Yeah, okay. But you won't show those photos. Cool, cool, cool. You know, this, this is how it works, Richard. I can see it, right? I can see it. And until we're able as a society to understand this money system has got to go, it has got to go because its tentacles go out and pollute and corrupt everything. And we also need to have a system in place where these greedy, elite, sociopathic, um, you know, uh, devils 
are not allowed to instigate this kind of system ever ever again right mm. so sorry i just wanted to put that out there rich because i very often find myself at odds with the person i'm speaking to because they'll come out and go yeah well what it is if we can just get a fair election and do it and i'm like no 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 mm. <laughs> Please. What you're saying there, like you've just hit the nail on the head with that, because and I've said this many, many times. It's the most easiest thing. If you want to see whether who are who you're Trump do, have a look and see who bailed him out in the early nineties. It was Wilbur Ross who was the head of the bankruptcy arm for the Rothschilds. The Rothschilds, who are only a bit player in this, by the way, they're only they're way down the list. They're not the top by any any way, shape, or form. The Rothschilds bailed out Donald Trump in the early 90s. So who do you think Donald Trump answers to? So if you're coming at me and telling me that Donald Trump's behind this new collapsing of the economy and he's going to bring in this new monetary system, who for? The, the, the dollar has collapsed. There's nothing behind it. And it always does after 75 to 100 years. Charlie Robinson, Macroaggressions, does a great podcast on this. I spoke to him about it. His book, um, the, was it, the Controlled Demolition of the United States, is, is amazing. And this isn't my forte um, econ economy, but he, he taught me a lot. And every 100 years, this collapses. So they've had to move, move away from the dollar bill, the backing, because there's nothing behind it. There's nothing, this is all fantasy anyway. It never used to be, but now it's fantasy. We all know that there's no gold anywhere. Um, backing any of this so they want to move over to digital currency and as you were saying now they're coming out saying trump's going to be moving us over to this who do you think is going who's controlling it who do you think's put this system who do you think pays the people who are setting these things up more it, it's ridiculous to think that, that, that they're going to go oh yeah all right, all right we're bored of this now we're going to go off and just sell around of course they're not they've got thousands of years into this system now there's not even going to be anything physical. It's going to be all hypothetical in your brain and digits on a computer. They haven't even got to bother to pretend to play the game now. And that's what we're seeing. And, and Chris, you just pointed out there, they're not even going to bother pretending to play the, the, the monetary game anymore. They're not going to the cult, this global cult, are not even going to bother to pretend to give you a democracy anymore. The facade that's been for the last 200 years of a democracy. They're not even going to pretend anymore. They want to outrightly control your life without you being able to say anything about it mm. and as you said there compromise it used to be that you used to be compromised by things actually were bad now you're going to be well you can't say that word because you'll be this and it's again it comes back to oh how bad do i look and you're like hang on a minute that's not even a bad thing to do they're relabeling what is domestic terrorism they're relabeling what is terrorism so you're not even doing anything bad you're saying you're having a thought wrong think again mm -hmm. so you're being compromised by wrong think not even a bad thing you don't need to do bad things anymore you just have to be perceived to have been doing something that they perceive to be bad now it's mental we live in a nut house mate they 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 must play the numbers game rich and by that they understand left brain thinking they understand that it doesn't matter who you are how great you are what your output in the world if you're a left brainer you're very easily controlled and you will always defend the very thing that's making you a slave. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's fascinating that I, I think of it as third dimension, right? Don't know why it's, I start with number three. I think it's because I did a podcast with, um, um, with somebody that, that, that talks about third dimension, but you've got third dimension, that's the matrix, right? That's the people that, that never had an independent thought or, you know, never had an out the box thought in the matrix, right? Then you've got fourth dimension, which is the people that go, do you know what? What they're telling us on the news, that I, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to kind of get that there's something wrong with that narrative, right? But the thing about, fourth dimension people is the way they try to make sense of this confusion is they use third dimension all yeah. the third dimension status quo so the thinking apparatus the the um the uh, um establishments you know the law the this and then you've got fifth dimension which i like to think is people like us we are completely independent of of those um 
two levels to a degree. I mean, we still have to live in a house. We still have to pay money, you know, to the bank for our mortgage or, or whatever it might be. Right. Um, but and when you when you see that what that picture I've just painted, hopefully I painted it well enough. It becomes fascinating because. I saw two people the other day chatting in an independent um, forum. I mean, independent of me, I mean. I think it was on a YouTube video. They were in the comments talking to each other, both of whom have been on my, my podcast. Obviously, I'm not going to say any names. It's, it doesn't matter. But they're both highly respectable people in their field, right? They're both very likable individuals. Um we get on like like houses on 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 fire right you know on the phone great chat just just like you and i rich right but here's the thing they're in the chat and it's like they're they're clearly fourth dimension you know they they realize there's more to life than just what you what you sold from mainstream media but the way that they're you know this kind of like conspiratorial how we're going to put this right is is all third dimension ways of you know right yeah if we'd have only voted for, for for this person that 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 would have you know people could just and i'm like oh oh guys i've had this conversation with you i've had it with you i've explained all and this is the power of keeping people in the left brain keeping them in that compartment where it doesn't matter how much you you put it in front of their face five minutes later you turn around and go yeah and about them then yeah you know it's weird mate is it it's just this thing we've been trained since the day we were born we had a, with mum and dad everyone someone looked after us and then i don't think people can get their head around i suppose and it's not easy is to get your head around you can't look after it. You can't have anyone else in the world look after you because then you give them the opportunity to take it away. And that's it. So it has to come from you, not to you. So if you're going to go to these people, these same bunch of criminals that offered you one solution, what do you think the next solution is going to be like? It's going to be the same type of solution to the outcome, towards the outcome that they want, the Great Reset, mm. that sort of stuff. It's mad. So to go to any of these politicians, any of these, they're all in there, as you say, third, fourth, dimension fifth dimension people it's it's not the person it's the way of thinking as you say and it's, that's a great analogy of way of putting it and even that can get co-opted into ego we can go well i'm a fifth dimension thinker and i'm a third dimension and then that i've seen that get co-opted just that that that, that hierarchy straight away it's like well I, I, there's been series that have come out that i've worked on where people talk about five dimensional thinking and connected to the cosmos and downloads and i'm thinking this you don't get it do you you don't get it if you're putting yourself as above other people because you can do something that they can't do then you literally have just slipped out of the bottom again mm. this is nonsense it's just an analogy to understand how your way of understanding the world works and you can slip between them it's nothing to do with you as a person that's ridiculous i'm not very good at economics i'm pretty shit at housework there's some good stuff that i'm good at and there's a lot of stuff i'm bad at i like i don't mind i don't have an ego thing in in this in the sense of I do it. I'm we all have an ego. I have a self protective ego, but I really don't care whether I'm, well, it comes in, but I can quickly spot it whether I'm trying to be better than this person, better than that person. Social media feeds into this, by the way. How many subscribers you got? How many followers? Followers. I mean, that's straight out of a cult, isn't it? Followers. How many followers have I got? I mean, how much of a cult leader do you need to be to worry about how many followers you've got? But as you were saying there, this, this understanding that, that the same system that, that got us into this place that we've allowed and created and bought into and paid for is going to get us out of it is insane this is totally insane and it's that munchausen syndrome it's that that if i just voted for this person that person would you think every four years has it got any better for you no it hasn't who do you think the people these two people that they've given you so they give you in england keir starmer zionist ultra zionist what are giving you boris johnson zionist how about we don't have any zionists can you give me an option? Can you just give me Barry from the Butchers, please? Someone who's actually done a day's work in their life. We're never going to get Barry from the Butchers there, are we? Because they're all picked from, the, uh, from these mind control. Yeah, it's... Um, Oxford, Cambridge, UCLA. It's, 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 it's a system mad. that's broke. It's, it's a system that's screwed.
It's mad, mate. If we got Tarzan in power, right? A guy that's just only ever like lived in the jungle with mm. fuck all. He'd do a. He'd just do a stel. Is it just would do a stellar job, and yet we've got this idiot that's gone to one of the most pre- had the most pre- pre- prestigious upbringings that you possibly can have, and he's an absolute bag of bag of shit. But of course he is because we know how it works, and you know. How many photographs of our uh, leaders in compromising positions do the intelligence service have? And and by intelligence service, I mean the people that represent the, the, the you do the work of the sociopaths. Not not all of our intelligence services. I hasten to add, but it's it's you know it's all in there. Um, going back to the fifth dimension thing, Rich. The point I was drawing, which I forgot to draw, is. Um, that if these dudes that I'm saying that are like my friends, they're very intelligent people. They, they, they've, they've been in charge of multi-million dollar equipment um, and, and literally uh, have been in charge of life and death. If they can't get it, right? And n- not many of them do, let's be honest. Then... The sociopaths, they look at these left brainers. Sorry, that sounds a bit derogatory, but I'm, you know, the people in the matrix, yeah. and they know. Do you know what the ratio is always always going to be? Seventy uh, percent people completely left brain always will be. The eight up going up to the eighty five are people that starting to realize something's not you know but they'd rather keep one foot in the third dimension and just keep going yeah. with the system because it's it's safe you know when we're behind bars locked up we've got chips in our arm there's fucking health passport digital co- you know it's still still so no yes stick that thing into my body yeah uh, it's it's yeah i just you know i just right you know they know that takes you up to the 85 then from the 85 to 95 are people that know it's wrong. It is wrong, but but they're too scared to do anything about it. So they're just going to counter. Then you've got the 5%, like the, the warriors that not only see it all, but they're prepared to do something about it. Hence people like yourself, Rich, who have, you know, speak the truth in podcasts. Um, and that's it. Five, five, but it isn't really five percent, is it? What is it? Is it, it, it out of every hundred people? If you look out the window at the moment, I'd say you need probably a thousand people, and you might have two of those rebels in there. You know, so these sociopathic elite understand that for every thousand people, they control nine hundred and ninety-seven. Yeah. And that the the three rebels, don't matter how well armed they are, don't matter how what what great orators they are, and whether they can, it, it's never, you know, they're not worth worrying. They, they give them give him the blooming own YouTube channel, let them talk to the world. It's irrelevant. It's such a drop in the ocean that the nine nine hundred ninety seven is gonna cat is gonna carry it. Um, so absolutely so, no, I so think that's what, a good way of putting it yeah. yeah and what what you were saying rich about they don't they don't they're just being blatant now i mean now they're getting people to bend over and they're shoving something up their jacksy right I know. i'm not gonna say i think we all know what i'm ref- right oh yeah. my god can you not see what they're doing to you they are laughing at you you know absolutely they, they are, are laughing, at you, laughing at you stood oh I don't want to go too much into into the the area that that but yeah but I know mate they are laughing at you I but mean they're they going to get people to back blatant. into the tents eventually they can be blatant rich going back to your point they can be blatant yeah. they can go yeah I know you guys get it but fuck you this 997 in a thousand they they're a bit dumb I'm afraid and like they will believe that we're all going to die in our beds of some like fictitious threat tomorrow night, you know, they will go along, they will go, yeah, I'm enlightened, and then they'll be watching their BBC news to get all their uh, enlightenment, you know. So I think you brought up a good point there, is that the, the, the thing that came, seems to be, and I spoke to Max Egan about this a couple of days ago, guys, if you don't know Max Egan, is go check his work out at the Crow House, he's great. Um, is he, um, he's, 
let, let's not say his surname again. I'm just getting a, my, my paranoid things have gone up. Only because he got deplatformed, didn't he? He's back on now. Okay. He's back on now. Okay. But he's, he's, I, I wouldn't worry about Max too much. Um, but um, but you can cut that, that last name out. No, if you no, no, to. no. I, I've got a massive... He, a mass, he's been doing this truth has, stuff yeah. for a long time. And almost everything he says makes sense and when it doesn't he holds his hand up and says look i'm i'm not sure about this bit and I, I, you know he's also um good friends with a good friend of mine so uh, he's great um Jimmy, i had him hello. on my show the other day um but what he he said um that the reason why he's not he gets it and he understands it because he's not scared of dying and I, I keep coming across that people is that people are not scared of dying are not scared of death kind of see this for what it is because Obviously, that's the only thing. Death and taxes are the only two things that, that are apparently um given. So if you're not scared of dying, then you kind of live and and put something in. And and I think everyone who's in these other dimensions, is, as you explain it, are looking for something to be brought to them to the table. Just give me another option. Okay, I don't like this one, but give me another option. Don't like this one. Give me another option. And this is the problem: is that this every option that these people give you will be back. Option. So we need to, the a very small percent of us that get this and, and convince and tell the other people, look, the options that you're going to give in a bad, what are you going to bring? And this is the problem I think really comes to is go, okay, if the voting system's knackered, if that doesn't work, what am I left with? What power do I have? Like, I don't, what do I do? If I can't, if I can't vote in, I mean, what power do I have over anything? But it's an illusion of power. You have to get rid of that illusion first before you actually go, okay, now what can I do? We'll you probably shrink it back into looking after your own grown food in your garden and shrink back to earlier what you said. is that how can they hold anything over you if you don't ask for anything? What do you need? You need a roof over your head, so your electricity on. I mean, you don't really need the internet unless you want to put this stuff out. I mean, if you can grow food in your garden... You can go back, and that's what they don't want. That's what Bill Gates has just bought up most of the land in in America and probably around the world, and why the Queen owns most of the land. She understands you can stick GMO foods on there. You've got that bit sorted as well. These people are trying to take over everything. So, mm. like, the options, like, in 1984, we come back to that, is that this guy had no uh, ability, got to the point where he had no option other than to live in that system. And that's where we're rapidly heading. We still have the time to build something else. But as you say, there are people that want to vote, who want to go there and think it's going to make a difference every four years between character A or character B, whichever, who are still answering to the same director. Then you're going to go around in that system and eventually you're not even going to get that option. And now this is what we see what's going to happen. We're going to have a feudal system where you're going to go back to kings and queens or just one dictator. And then you're going to have their minions, military and the other people. And you're not going to have even that option. Because that option was never there anyway, because we are in a feudal system, but you don't realise it because we're not doing it out. These Merovingian families, these um, even the, the British royal families are part of these black nobility families. These are the ones that are really control things behind the scenes. Um, and you need to look into these bloodline families. So the, the feudal system has not gone away. It's just dressed up to keep the people at peace. But now they're not even wanting to do that. So they're going to come out and blatantly show you, look, you have no other options. And so this people very, that's the big breaks. People need to go, there's no point in voting. This is a farce. Mm -hmm. And as you say, people have been doing this for a long time, still go on about voting. I don't, I don't get it. I know that they know better, but maybe is it because they don't, they, they don't have any, that they can't conjure up their own other option. They can't think of any, well, if I don't have that, what other system do we work in? What is the other option? But the problem is you can't ask anyone else for an option. You've got to create your own option. There's the a, only way out of this. I should just point out, Rich, there's also a massive moral thing here, right? I don't vote because I'm a fucking legend. Sorry to say it, but I am. Why am I a legend? Because I fucking care about myself and people, mm. right? And I'm not going to vote, go and vote in, in, and take part in a sham democracy because what am I doing? I'm ratifying that sham by voting in it. I'm rati I'm saying that this is acceptable. This is all right. And what yep. what happens? That means the children, the next generation, just get continued into slavery. And 
okay, you know, if you want to be a bit dramatic, that means if you vote, you are by definition a child abuser. And I'm not rich. It's, it's just that simple. I'm not. I don't want to be one. You know, got a fucking shitload of other faults, thank you very much. Like, <laughs> like we all have. I'm not trying to sound perfect, but come on. I can see it's a sham. That's what, you, you, you know, that is a reason enough. The reason I don't do, uh, and let's not go there, but we know what I say when I say the reason I don't do a certain thing, right, is it's it's just the moral side of it. it it's wrong. It's wrong. It, from what I see, it's wrong, not based in science, in no way going to help the future of humanity uh, in terms of evolution. Um, in actual fact, when you get asked to do these bizarre, what, what, what to some of us, you know, these extreme things, you're probably actually driving more people to suicide and addiction and mental health illnesses and bankruptcy by doing these certain things. That's why I don't do it, because it's wrong. Am I scared? Yeah, I'm as scared as the next person when I go out wherever and I'm going to have to face confrontation and I have mm. and I've, I've had it, you know, but a little bit like you said about Max, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of getting punched in the face. You know, I can give back as good as I get if, if, it, if it really comes to it. Um, and fortunately, it rarely sort of happen. I hope I'm making sense here, guys. I'm just not going to say, say, you know, you, you can apply what I'm saying to all situations where I believe this is just bullshit. You know, this is not for the good of humanity. This is, yeah. this is the middle tier, as it were. So the, all, I don't know if you call it the technocracy, the cor corporatocracy, the, the corporate sociopaths who are one level below the Babylonian sociopath. So the Babylonian, whether that be black nobility, the, the elitist, you know, bloodline families that, that, that have held all the money or, or held the reins all these years or whatever the hell. Um, you know, it's, it's just... Ah, ah. It is. Sorry, what, you're, what you explained there, though, is, is perfect explanation of Biderman's chart of coercion. So, guys, if you haven't ever heard of Biderman's chart of coercion, go and have a look at it and then look at the current situation and work your way down this list because you will be astonished. Now, this Biderman's chart of coercion is a list of how they uh, terrorise and abuse um, prisoners of war. And if you look at it and compare it to the current situation, you will be astonished at how they've worked down this list. The very last thing on the list says get people to do nonsensical things consistently to break them down now what has happened over the last year you'll be getting to you're having to do the most ludicrous absurd things and that one really shocked me how blatant this was but other ones on that list Bidman's chart of coercion will show you how you've been manipulated um the book i'm writing at the moment is about um about cults and how it it, it kind of ties into the current situation and how they've used the same techniques of indoctrination and um this is what we're seeing we're seeing a global cult use the current situation to indoctrinate people so they're all mad or, or pushed down or trampled down to accept this great reset and that's the economy the great reset is through the world economic forum for a reason because they're going to accept um and you said before it all comes down to the economy of how you learn a living and how you keep yourself alive obviously and it's going to be digital it's going to be online and it's going to be a nightmare when you get that social credit system through and that's when we're going to see 1984 come out from the shadows and really into the world is that once you've got a social credit system and you've got a cashless society, you will have to keep your social credit up so far. It's behavioural modification. To be able to travel, to be able to shop in this place, to be able to even go on the internet, you would have to have a social credit score of so much. So that's how they're going to do it. And it's all going to be for the greater good. My book's called The Greater Good. It's all for the greater good because it's an inversion. It's a satanic inversion. It's not for your greater good. It's for their greater good, the greater good of how they want the world to be. That's what's happening. You're being set up and modified and trampled upon for the last, well, for the day you were born, but specifically the last year and a bit. And um, 
as you said, it comes down to the monetary system. That's why we're seeing this whole Wall Street thing collapse. It's not what people seem to think it is. It's not a break in the, the leak. It's, it's a way of them setting it up so people demand something else. Problems, reaction, solution, as our friend David says. They'll create the problem, they'll get the reaction, and they'll provide the solution. Every solution that these people provide for you through the government, through the new mainstream media, every single solution will be a push towards your privileges, your human rights, sorry, becoming privileges. You do not need to earn human rights. You are God-given human rights. They are trying to take them away, repackage them, and make you realise, oh, no, I need to earn the right to be able to leave the house. I need to earn the right to work and earn a living. I need to earn the right to earn. I mean, it's, just, it's ludicrous and it's insane. And that's what 1984 is just trying to tell you, is that everything we've been saying in this place is leading to that dystopian future mixed with the technocracy of Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Them two books together will give you an idea of what the world will be like. I know you've got a son, I've got a son, what will be like in 30, 40 years' time for these kids. And it will be. And don't look how fast this has changed in 12 months. Imagine in 30 years' time what you're dealing with. And that's why I do this, because I'm pissed off and I'm angry about it. And I'm being bullied and I don't like being bullied and I'm being told what to think and I won't have that either. Mm. And I won't have being told what to do, where to, what to wear, where to go. Because who the hell are you? I'm a sovereign being. Why are you telling me what to do? Why are you telling Chris what to do? Why did you just leave me alone to get on my life? That's where the sovereignty of, of having boundaries. We are boundaryless now as people, as human beings. We are not boundaries and we're being told that putting boundaries up is domestic terrorism. We're being told putting bound safety version, safety boundaries around ourselves is is oh you've got something to hide, haven't you? What do you mean? You've got something to hide. Well, I don't want you knowing everything about me because you don't deserve to know everything about me. Who the hell are you to think to come into my garden and tell me to take the fence down? Don't be yes. stupid. It's insanity. And that's where we're heading. And I will not have it. And I know people like you won't have it. But if we keep buying into this left-right system, whilst we're dicking around in that world, then nicking the cutlery out the gar- out the out the garden. Shouldn't have a cutlery in the garden. Um, you're letting the cutlery out cutlery out the kitchen. They're looting the place. And we need to wake up fast. And I know that there's a small percentage of us that have. But there is, I think there's going to have to become a point where people like us do go, okay, what is the other option for us? Because I'm not living in that world. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to have to let everybody else get on with it because they're going to go into that world. And if that's their choice to do so, they should be able to do so. That's their life. If they see the world like that and they don't see it as a bad thing, then good lucky bastards, quite frankly, because I would rather be like that sometimes. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance can be bliss. Of course it can be. Unfortunately, once you start to look at this stuff and realise that, oh, my God, we actually have been lied to about every single thing. We don't even know what's got what's gone on in the past. We have no idea how far humanity goes back. We know, have no idea how we were even seeded. We have no idea um, like even how the, world, the wars were created, both sides funded by the same bloodline families. We have no idea about this stuff. We're not taught about this as kids, and we're not even taught that this is even an option. The reality, we, we were born into augmented reality. And some of us wake up out of augmented reality in stages. But you have to push through that. And then the price of that is that you can no longer go back into it without wanting to drink yourself stupid. Because it's just depressing once you realise it. And this is hard to do. And something like 1984 is a great example. They were trying to tell you. Whether that was revelation of the method, which is a, a, a process that they do, they'll tell you. A bit like vampirism, they'll have to tell you that they're going to, um, they have to be invited in. So the vampires is another analogy of you have to invite these people into your life. They'll tell you what they're going to do. But if you don't stop them and you invite them in like you're doing, like we're doing with the internet, like we're doing with cashless society, like we're doing with everything, then they'll, they'll leech off you for the rest of your life. But they have to be invited in, guys, because they have an actual really weird twisted moral code between them where they have to be invited in. So they'll tell you through the films, through the books and for everything that they're going to do these things, but they'll paint it up in such a way that you probably won't understand it, but they'll feel like they've done their moral duty. It's, it's bizarre. Yes. But yeah, no, this is fascinating stuff, mate. It really is. It's, I'm with you with it. I'm with, you're one of the very few people that you can that, that get this, but there are others out there that get it, that get that all of this Good. left, right paradigm is nonsense, but we're going to disappear off the internet eventually. <laughs> so we're going to have to find another way to communicate, I believe. If, if it carries on in this way, I mean, it, it might not do. It might not do. It might, I'm not saying this will definitely happen, but 
the way we're going with someone like Biden in and as an example of how insane things have got. And he is just an example. He doesn't even know where he is. I can barely think he can hold his toilet in. He's completely off his rocker. But he's an example. If that sort of person who has no idea where he is can get into that, that position, really, do they really care that you know it anymore? They're taking the mickey by putting someone like that in who doesn't know where he is. They're just going, just give them someone who's basically a shell of a human being. They'll, they'll, they'll buy it. They'll buy it. They might kick off a bit, but if you've got good guy, bad guy now. So he's in. Mm. He's really Mr. Evil. And then you've got on the other side, you've got Trump, who's the good guy now. This is pro wrestling. This is ridiculous. And, and Trump did pro wrestling. So he's just learned from that is that by making someone look really bad, you look good in, in contrast. It's yeah. so weak in storytelling. And we need a good, bar, good guy, bad guy situation here. And I think that's where we are with, with the 1984 thing. Yes, Rich, I wanted to just pick up there that for people listening and thinking, what the hell are these guys going on about? <laughs> one, of the, um, one of the requirements, if you're in this glo- weird global cult that seems to be just create, just um, controlling the whole narrative, and by that I mean world events, um, is that they can do stuff to you, like they can hurt you really badly, they can kill thousands of people at a time, whether it's you know through this, that or the other, but they have to tell you first. It's mm. almost a bit like a sort of Faustian thing, right? <laughs> Probably not the right... You know, it, 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 it's as bizarre as people that sign this Faustian pact. So you rock stars who get all the celebrity, all the glory, but then they're doing all this satanic stuff on stage. And, and, and you know, and then one of their children just dies in a mysterious accident. Mm-hmm. And, and then uh, um, they get humiliated in a highly embarrassing incident right this rings bells with all our celebrities right this is this is uh allegedly all the requirements so when you sign up your pack with the devil which comes through the form of a record company right um you you you're going to get your fame and fortune but they require you to do certain things and if you do them and you say yes sir that you're fine you'll you'll have you'll click career will have longevity um if you don't then you end up in a drink and drugs accident <laughs> um, absolutely you do yeah yeah but but as equally as fascinating as what you said about these sociopaths they have to tell you what they're going to do before they do it and the, i guess the theory is there is if you're that dumb they've told you they're going to do it and you still are sh- so stupid you can't see it then they kind of see that as their entitlement. You 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 haven't earned the right to not have it done to you. And I was reading this book a while back, and I read it after a certain um, event that made the global headlines. I'm not going to say what it what it is. It doesn't matter. If you care, you will you will do what I do, which is start to read books, start to look yeah. at videos start to listen to the stuff that Rich is saying. And you, what I mean is, for all the quick fixes out there, and Chris, just tell us what it is. Just tell, no, that's that, that's not how it works, right? You need to come on board with us, right? Not just have little tidbits so you can then argue on the internet and say, well, that's a load of shit. That's, you know, you need you need to realise that for, for two men in our, in our prime, me more in my prime than Rich, you know, <laughs> to, to be being this honest that we're kind of on the money here, guys, you know, not yeah. we, 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 we don't, we can't dot every T and cross every I or whatever, but you know, we're kind of on the money here, guys. Right. And you need to come on board. But anyway, the point is there's an incident in this book, which then took place on a globe, on the global stage. And I was just like that. I, I've read about that. Mm-hmm. I've just read about that in, in, in this book, by the way, it's called the Illuminatus Trilogy. I, I don't really know what to make it. It was by a guy called Robert uh, Anton. Okay. Uh, Robert Anton Wilson. 
have a look at that. It's, it, you can see how big it is. I haven't read all of it. I read the... It, it came off the back of the first book, which was called um, The Eye in the Pyramid, so the Masonic symbol there. And he's yeah. written, basically written a sort of parody of the Illuminati or what, what we would call, you know, Illuminati, all the checkerboard stuff, the 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 num the numerology all this kind of you know sort of stuff but it's just fascinating mate that one of the incidents he he writes about as fiction in that book we, we all of us of our of, who've lived in the last um well this incident was about four four years ago now it it was just as he wrote it so the notion that this stuff isn't all pre-planned and you know pre-ordained and this is yeah. The world is a stage, and it's. They they tell you they tell you, uh, through art through music, I mean there's several, and they'll tell you exactly who they are as well. Um, I remember my, seeing Michael Jackson's front of the uh, cover of the Blood on the Dance Floor album in 1997. It had the towers coming down in the background, whilst he danced on a sonic floor, and that's only one version of that doing. I think it was a book that came out called Titan just before the Titanic sank. It was about 10 years before. Mm. They do this every time. They're going to tell you what's going to happen. You can read into that whatever you like, but this happens a lot. Lady Gaga the other day when she was doing having a sing song at the inauguration, can never say that word. She's wearing a, a golden dove with a, I can't always call it, like a, like a seed thing in its mouth. That's the, um, I mean, she's telling you out right there that that's the order of the golden circle um that's a female kind of freemasonry thing so she's yeah. a freemason um they're attached to the knights of the golden circle the knights of the golden circle apparently were very pro civil war so they're not it's not as if they're not telling you exactly what they're doing she's standing there singing with this thing on her telling you look i'm a, i'm a not all freemasons are bad but i put it that of all, of course not but you don't get to the level of lady gaga without being some way in there she does satanic things all the time and also um, Gaga is um, the planet, I think it's, I want to say Jupiter. And Gaga, she took the name Gaga because it was the previous name for planet Jupiter. Jupiter was the messenger of the planet Saturn, Satan. She's a messenger of Satanism. They'll tell you, if you do, as, as Chris said, if you do the research, you will find out these patterns. They're trying to tell you for all of these things. They want you, some of them maybe, some of these pop stars aren't bad people. They probably want you to get it, but you're not going to get it without without looking and i would say chris point i brought up a good point there is buy books i've got loads of books behind me that's hot it's not even a third of what i've got buy physical books and take them off the internet and read them away from the internet because you're gonna lose this information if you don't have it physically i would get things physical off the internet buy a book get away from the computer and go and read it elsewhere and also you'll retain the information more as well um so chris is what you're saying there he sat there and did the research he bought the book he sat there and he read it and um, you take from it what you will, and then you find commonalities in these things. And the common themes, as I said in the video, a video I did on my, my site the other day, the common themes seem to be eugenics. They want to cull the population down to around about 500 million. They um, want a transhumanist agenda. They want to change the nature of what is, is to be human. And they want a technocracy, which is a fascist global world, through technology it would have been something else before the technology came along those three things eugenics change what it means to be human and have a world that's controlled 24 7 by technology and everything you do is seen which is 1984 that's the world that's coming you only need to know those three things in 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 brave new world whether i i read it a long time ago but don't they all go and look at the savage yep and the savage is a is a boy that he's grown up outside of this fucking horseshit parade, this, 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 you know, he's grown up outside of this thing that we're all talking about. And he's actually like a normal human. He's not had any trans stuff done to him. And by trans, I mean, trans biology or trans yeah. technology or implants. And, and, you know, he doesn't operate to this certain, so he's, he's a savage. He's, and, and this, this really is, you know, Let's um, that's what they're saying though, Chris. You've hit the nail on the head. There's that us guys that are this tiny percent decide to live outside that system will be deemed the savages, the dirty, the unwashed, the unkept. What yes. we need to realize is that even you guys that are in the technocracy, they see you this tiny one percent as the dirty, 
the um, unkept and the unwashed anyway. And they also see you as idiots who have bought into it. I would assume that they have a little bit more respect for the people that don't buy into this and have had at least had the courage to go, fuck off, I ain't doing that. Whether they see us as unkept and unwashed, I really couldn't give a shit. But they'll have respect that we didn't buy into it. And so if you go into this system willingly, they're not even going to have any respect for you. You might as well have some respect for yourself and say, I'm not going to be part of it. Of course, it's going to be really hard. You're going to be locked out of the system if they get what they want pretty soon. Passports aren't that all. Wait, I said that word, get rid of that word. The passports won't be are not that far away. The passports are not that far away, these digital passports, and you are talking about in the next few months. Once these things come in, cash and society, digital passwords, passports, and a social credit system, then you're well on your way to this technocracy. And then you're well on your way to the eugenics culling of the population, which I think this whole situation part of this situation if it wasn't part of it it's certainly beneficial towards it anyway mm. and it's interesting isn't it that um it, it all gets so fast there's there's something going on there's something going on like the night i'm just going to chuck this stuff out there and let's go back and let's go back and actually talk about the parallels in 1984 but i'm just looking at some stuff on the computer here so we've got boris johnson's dad came out and wrote a book called The V, V for the uh, thing that we're all living up, you know, uh, supposed to yeah. be afraid of at the moment, right? Yep. Um, and I remember, I think it was the night before, it, it was certainly in the days preceding the shooting at the Mandalay Hotel, or shooting from the Mandalay Hotel, that Boris was in, uh, Burma of all places and he was talking to the the British consulate there you know our, our man in Burma and they were they were you can find this on the internet they were um let me just put that in there or people will get annoyed that I keep mentioning half half statements so um uh so you, you could someone's already been typing it in so, yeah, they, they go into a, a temple in My, Myanmar. Sorry, Burma's Myanmar now, isn't it? Show my age there. Um, and they get to this temple and Boris Johnson starts going, da, 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 on the road to Mandalay. He starts reciting the Kipling poem, right? Right. At which point the foreign, um, the, the ambassador goes, Boris, bloody shut up, because it's, I think, I think the insinuation was a bit racist, you know, I don't, I don't think it was, I think it's actually a, a really nice part, I can't, I'm, I'm not that familiar with the poem, The Road to Mandalay, but I don't th think it's as bad as this guy made it, but he grabbed his arm and went, shut up, right, well, it's just so fa fascinating that literally, like, I think it was the next day, um, the shooting was from the Mandalay. So the poem is called The Road to Mandalay. The oh. next day, there's a mass shooting of hundreds of people hit. I'm not, not sure how many died, but from the Mandalay Hotel. And you get all these... You get so many of these weird crossovers. Boris Johnson's dad yeah. writing a book. Yeah. You know called the v after you know i don't need to say it again do i right it, it's it's I, I i'm willing to hold my hand up and say coincidence is a very strange thing and it really can seem like bloody hell and it is it's an innocent so i'm not i'm not trying to draw too much but when you tie it in with the you know the faustian pact um these you know, you see these celebrities that have been in the game a long time and they're just basically carrying out satanic rituals on stage. Yeah, they're they're yeah. just doing satanic rituals and, you know, these all these awards shows and ceremonies, it's, 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 you can see these major pop stars are on stage. They're dressed in the colours of the occult. Mm. What they're doing up there is not a pop show. 
they're getting the energy from that audio you know the the the, 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 the they're getting the positive energy in it to turn it into like a dark thing aren't they it's it's just insane but we're we're moving away from 1984. So what I've done, Rich, is um, I just got a couple of web pages up um, okay. uh, discussing the parallels between 1984 and 2020. Um, let let me just so what we discussed thought crime, haven't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, and we've, we can see in, that coming out in yeah, the book. Right you've only got to have someone go, Rich. I think you're committing a thought crime. I'm going to report you, and that's it. You're fucked. You're, you're, yeah. you are you don't have any re- redress or recourse of action, whatever that expression is. Someone has only got to think that you're thinking bad things about the party, Big Brother, or... or, or yeah. um, and then and to say, add on top of that, Rabsy Nesbitt, the guy who played Rabsy Nesbitt, who's in the film... Um, guys, if you don't know Rabstein Nesbitt, he was a comedian, a Scottish comedian. Um, he's in the film and he gets put in the jail with Winston and he says, I didn't realise it, but I was committing thought crime. And he was dobbed in by his daughter. And we're seeing that now. And only two days ago, I posted a thing, I think, on David, um, David's website. Whoops. David's website. And um, on David's website. And it's talked about the UK government using... Um, 16 and 17 year olds, so still children, 16, um, at, to dob in their parents for anything. So this is this is here. They're doing that already. Yeah, and this is a this is a feature that's featured heavily in communist manifestos. From, I mean, I, um, you might, I don't know if you've read Wild Swans, Rich. I uh, no, I haven't. No. Oh, really worth reading. It's okay. It's by a, a Chinese a American a Chinese woman who lives in America now. She's called Jun Jun Chang, I believe it is. You but you can find this out in a search. She wrote a book called okay. Wild Swans: Three Generations of Daughters Living Under Chairman Mao. Right. Right. Okay. And it talks about all of this when. Little things like when Chairman Mao died and it came over the loudspeakers, everybody just dropped to the floor, you know, because you had to, at his name, like, drop to the floor. And then it's saying Chairman Mao is dead. And, and the people, she's saying, like, she, I don't know if it's her at this stage. or I, I think it's she, she, like, didn't want to look at the person next to them because she didn't want to be seen to be, like, acknowledging this in an inappropriate way. Maybe, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. what everyone wanted to do was go, yay! But, but like, is that person going to go, yay? Or are they going to yeah. go, oh, Big Brother's dead? It's, this is, you know, she talks about the, the ludicrousness of the Great Leap Forward, which was Mao's okay. communist propaganda. Anything with great in is communist propaganda, right? So the Great right. Reset. It's not the Great Reset. It's the complete opposite, right? Absolutely. Or, or it's the great reset for the sociopaths, mm. and um, yeah. So it it got to this stage where he they would do stupid things like they would have in the for the great leap forward for the progress. Everyone would have to give anything they own that was metal into the uh, industrial effort, right? So right. and and off the back of that. They just destroyed all like the infrastructure of the company by giving all the metal to Chairman Mao's industry to fund the war against so and so. What this this kind kind of thing, you know? And so, so all industry couldn't function because it had given all its metal away. And um, it, it, there's some horrible bits in the book. Um, I won't repeat them because it could upset. Well. Here I am, you know, not, I'm not, I can't say the truth because the platform will say that what I'm saying could offend people. Absolutely. But if I say, Jeez. if I say the word cannibalism, ca- ca- mm. cannibalism, right, you get where I'm going with this. These people were starving in, in millions died, millions died under, 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 under mouth. But yeah, Wild Swans is worth watching and um, you get the other threads they had this, um, the, the threads of communism from what I see is they get these like 
uh, children's brigade brigades where they right, get yeah. their uniform and then they go out and they dob people in and they drag people out of their houses and they beat them, you know, and you've only got to be suspected of a crime. It might yeah. be a thought crime, can't be proved, but suspected. And these gangs of children will come and grab you and they will, will beat you up, right? This is a, a theme that runs through these communist manifestos or these communist operations. Um, another one is the... Um, uh, uh, oh, the perfect citizen, right? So under Mao, you had Comrade, uh, let's just call him Comrade Chen, right? Comrade Chen was like this perfect little boy that all he did all his day was like help help old people across the road. You know, this fucking little virtue signaling twat, right? Who's now been held up as what we should all aspire to be like Comrade Chen, you know, today, Comrade Chen, he went, he went hungry because he saw a three-year-old child with no food. You, you know, it's just this yeah, cringy, just... virtuous, like what we're living under now. Um, this, this, uh, it, it, as a service person, you, you get, thank you for your service. It's like, oh, f shush. I know, I know people mean it well, Rich, right? But it's this buying into this cringy agenda of, 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 of like, you you really know what my service is? And my service was to fucking go and massacre other teenagers to make the sociopaths even more powerful. That's what my service was in, in you know, if we want to be brutally frank about it. I'm not saying that's why I joined up. I'm not saying I didn't serve with wonderful people. I'm not saying that there are some conflicts in the world where we do need boots on the ground. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is you, you have no idea what you're saying to me. You, you literally have no. Yeah. By saying thank you for your service, it's, it's you're just buying into this, this um, uh, Orwellian speak that you've heard other people say, and you think it's virtue, you know, or you might actually genuinely mean it. But ah, it's um. The sociopaths have come up with that thank you for your service, sir, or mom, because they need to make their military bulletproof and resistant to any criticism. Well, so, you've seen this happen right now with the NHS and scientists, scientism. There's this this holding up of authority. It used to be, obviously, the armed forces. Now it's switched over to NHS in the UK. And as soon as they'll border that, they'll drop them. These are the gods, the demigods now. They're the demigods that they put in the middle that you can't criticise anyone from the NHS. You can't criticise the NHS. Hang on a minute. The NHS has been a corporation for a very long time now. It hasn't been a so social service for a long, long time. Um, but you're right. It's a, the, the demigod status. And that kind of feeds in. People love that. I have people around here saying, I'm a, I'm a, and they used the term in 1984, I'm a frontline worker, proudly. Mm. What are you talking about, frontline worker? Do you know any? And then you ask them about the the tests, and you ask them about the vaccines, and they don't know anything about any of it. Like, how can you you bought into this? But they've pumped them up, and they do this to pop stars. They put them on the front cover and the best thing in the world for a couple of years, and then they'll pull them back down again when they're used, they're, they're, they're used to, their their use has dried up. And yeah. then it's the same secular plays. These people, these bloodlines aren't very smart, mate. They're not. They they just once you figure them out. Like any psychopath or sociopath, there is a model for these type of people. And that's why, because they're not, in essentially, they're not human like we are human. I'm not saying they're alien. I'm saying they don't function on a human level like we do. They're almost cyborg. And they're trying to get us to behave the way they behave in one yes. group of mind thinking. And that, to me, is what artificial intelligence is. It isn't actually a computer program. Artificial intelligence is an artificial way of thinking it's as simple as that it's not a true honest from the heart way of thinking it's an artificial way of thinking and thus behaving and i think that's where we're at at the moment we actually have got to the point where most people are of artificial intelligence already they've been programmed and that they're not going to get out of it because they don't want to they don't know any better how can you reprogram a cyborg who actually doesn't have that functionality in them anymore and that's now Imagine in 30, 40 years' time, we're going to have artificial intelligence. Technology-wise, we're going to have artificially intelligent people. 
Yes. A couple of things. I, I know you've got to go in a sec, Rich. Yes, you've yeah. been so kind to give us all your time. The one thing that really hit home to me in 1984 is when he said, the bombs that dropped on London were probably fired by Big Brother themselves, you know, by the, by the, the party themselves. That was the, my first exposure to what we now know is a false flag, right? Yeah. This bombing of your own shit or, you know, doing certain things in, in capital cities and then blaming it on a perceived enemy to then get the people to demand that we go to war with this enemy, right? That was fascinating in light of what we've seen in the last 20 years. Yeah, problem, reaction, solution, mate. You've just said you've they create the problem, get the reaction, provide the solution. The other one is for two minutes, or it might be three, I think I think for two minutes every day in this Orwellian Big Brother society, you have to go outside and you have to hate for two minutes. You have to go, rah! And you direct that hate at the... the, the um, the false conjured up enemies of the society. So in Big Brother, it's Emmanuel Goldstein, who's who's the enemy of Big of everybody. You know, he's this guy that writes this revolutionary propaganda shit. You know, um, and you have to go outside and you literally have to scream and snarl for two minutes to show your hate at at any enemy. Well, you spin that. And what have we had where everyone goes yeah, outside yeah, the... for two minutes a day and they <laughs> clap like, like sea lions, you know? It, yeah. It's fucking fascinating, Rich, isn't it? Is they were, I spotted that straight away from the moment that they started doing that. That was like, that's an inversion. They don't care whether you hate or praise. They just want you to get, they want you to feel what they want you to feel. So that going out clapping for two, I mean, that was just so mental. And they tried to do it again, didn't they, a couple of months ago, and no one bothered. Um, but that was just a test to see if they could get away with it again. But you're right, that 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 hate. And then they've done it with, with Trump as well. They've done that. The, what they do now is if, if you put any mainstream media on, you get two minutes of hate from at him. He's the Goldstein now at the moment. But then there's a whole group of people that support him. So there's this complete divide. It's very, very clever. And the other thing in 1984, just before I go, I wanted to mention, is that they, consistently through 1984... You get the tannoy telling you about the number of people that have died in this fictional war. And what is happening at the moment? Every time you turn the telly on, every time you put social media on, every time you put the news on, the situation numbers are, are shouted at you consistently. It's yeah. exactly the same thing. It's all fictional and they're using the same play. It's just battering you with nonsense data as they were. Watch 1984 because it's consistent. It's exactly the same as what they're doing now with this situation data. Rich, you've been an absolute legend. I'm going to stop there because I don't want you to be late for your next appointment. Thank mm. you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, yo, in in a hundred years time, mate, maybe a thousand years, people will look back at this podcast and go, fuck me, those guys knew what they were, you know? How, how brave were those guys, to, you know, or we might be heralded as, as the Emmanuel Goldsteins of the, in the future, you know, we're, we're, we are pub, you know, we are the public enemy number one. And for that, mate, we can, we can be very proud, can't we? Uh, yeah, I'd be proud of that. That wouldn't bother me at all. Okay. At least I tried. At least I'm putting some effort in. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for having me, Chris. I really appreciate you sharing your audience with me. It's very kind of you. No, no, no. Let you're a legend, mate. Thank you. Just stay on the line so I say a quick, quick proper goodbye rich to everybody at home please could you like and subscribe then we can bring you more of this content i would one us guys are the the few channels that actually not just telling you the truth but we tell it from a level that's up 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 here instead of getting you to focus and argue and bicker over the minutiae down down here we just we're just trying to have complete transparency and honesty it doesn't work if you don't subscribe and click the little bell so you know when our next video is. That's it. Massive love to everybody. Look after yourselves. Big Brother is watching you. <laughs>